Hey guys, and welcome to your first video of Chapter 3. This is talking about motion in two dimensions, and today we're going to talk about something called vectors. And you guys might have had a little bit of experience with vectors in math, and so hopefully for some of you guys this won't be too brand new. So, why do we use vectors in science? Um, we're going to use vectors in physics to describe motion that moves in two dimensions. So up until now, we've just been concerned with things that either move uh, left to right, or free-falling objects that go up and down. Objects that move in two dimensions, these are things that don't travel in a straight horizontal or vertical line, but they move at an angle. So we have something that's going to be going over in the x direction, as well as going up in the y direction. Of course, that could be the opposite, too. It can be falling as well. So projectiles are the things we're going to be studying in this chapter, and vectors are going to help us describe their motion. So what is a vector? A uh, scalar quantity is something that has magnitude only. This means that there's no direction attached to it. So a scalar would be something like distance. When we describe the distance something has moved, we don't really specify uh, in what direction it ended up. We just say it moved 100 meters or however far it moved. Speed is another example of a scalar quantity. It has no direction to it. And time, of course, time only goes one way. It can't really have a specific direction going to it. Vectors have magnitude and direction. So they have a number and they ha specify a positive or a negative direction. Or it'll actually say in the problem it's going towards the coast or to the east, to the north, um, however you want to describe it. Sometimes with vectors, so some ways you can show direction with vectors, let's talk about that. You can say something is positive or negative or you can actually specify uh, a compass point or a cardinal direction is what we call those. So we have uh, north, south, east, and west or you can do um, angles. And we're going to do primarily angles in this class uh, because it's just very descriptive as to where the object's going to end up and you guys will see that in a little bit. So adding vectors together. If you had two vectors you'd like to add together, you can't simply add their magnitudes together. You have to remember that there's a direction attached to them. So whenever you add vectors together, you have to find what's called the resultant. So why would I want to add vectors together? Let's think of an example real quick. Um, let's say that I have a displacement of 10 meters to the east. And let's say I go that direction and then I decide to go twenty meters west. Now granted your problems won't be as easy as this, but this is going to give you an example. So I would draw a vector for my first displacement. So I'm going to draw it being ten meters to the east. And let's say this is ten meters east. Now I'm going to draw the vector for my second displacement, which is 20 meters west. Now try to draw these as proportional as possible, so 20 meters is twice as much as 10, so I'm going to go twice as far. And this is going to represent my, t my journey 20 meters west. We've already been doing this in this class. I've been drawing vectors and showing you guys the path that stuff is traveling. We just haven't been calling it a vector. So if I were to add these two vectors together, we've got 10 meters this way and 20 meters this way. The resultant here would be a vector going 10 meters west. Because I ended up here, and this is where I started. All right, let's look at one that isn't a, in a straight line like this. So consider a student walking to school. He walks 1,000 meters east to the store first, shown by this vector here. And then he walks 1,000 meters north to the school. So his trip is composed of two vectors, one going to the east and one going north that you can draw like this. So the resultant, if I wanted to add those two vectors together and figure out the student's displacement, I would draw my resultant from starting at the tail of my last vector, I'm sorry, tail of my first vector, to the head of my last vector. 
So my resultant in this case would be a diagonal line. Oops, it's not supposed to be that curvy. Sorry about that. A diagonal line that goes from the tail of my first vector to the head of my last. This line I call the resultant. Here. And that resultant represents the student's displacement. Now, oops, let's go back here. To actually solve this value for your resultant, hopefully you guys can see that this is a right triangle, and we would need to do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the actual magnitude of my resultant would be, to figure out what the actual number would be. The direction we're going to talk about in, in a little bit here. So that previous example was pretty straightforward because there were only two vectors, but what if you had a lot? What if your journey didn't look like something simply over and up, but it was composed of a bunch of different vectors added together? Well, you're still going to do the same thing. You're still going to draw your resultant as being from the tail of your first to the head of your last vector. So in this case, it looks like that. Now, finding out this resultant mathematically is not going to be as easy as doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But we could do it with a little bit of knowledge of geometry and uh, figuring out the sides of this shape. But there's another way that we can do it that's not mathematically, and we can do this graphically. So we would need to set a scale, and we graph our vectors. You then use a ruler, and you measure your resultant. So, for example, on this previous slide, if I, let me erase all of this, if I decided that I was going to graph this motion, and I decided that one meter was going to equal one centimeter on my graph, each one of these lines would be drawn um, to this scale. So I could measure the lines and figure out how many meters I went in each vector. And then I would measure this resultant and however many centimeters it was, would be equal to the meters that I traveled, or my displacement. So we're going to get some practice doing graphic method um, in class. The mathematical way I think is much easier, but I feel like students need to know how to do both. Um, so this just explains the graphical method in a little bit more detail. Uh, like I said, we're going to do some practice with that in class, but that's just setting a scale and actually measuring it. So a couple of rules to remember whenever we measure vectors together. The first one is that they have to be added head to tail. This means the arrow with head of one has to be touching the tail of the other. Adding vectors together like this is wrong. Um, this essentially is telling the observer that you went two different directions at the same time. Not possible. So we want to make sure the head of one touches the tail of the next. Now, if your vectors are not oriented like that, it is possible to move them parallel to their original position so that they sit head to tail. So I'm going to pick this guy up here. This is obviously the wrong configuration. So I'm going to make this be correct, and I'm going to pick this vector up, and I'm going to move it parallel to its original position so it sits down here. I then get this picture where I have my down vector and then over to the right. Um, and these are correct. I can add these together. These together, I can't. All right, so vector addition is commutative. And this means that it doesn't matter the order in which you add vectors together. So let's try to do a couple of examples super quick um, just so that you guys get the idea. So remember that velocity is a vector. So I'm going to make two vectors. Um, and I'm going to denote a vector as having a line over it. So this is vector A, and we'll say vector A is 3 meters a second to the east. And then we'll say vector B is 4 meters a second to the north. And let's say I wanted to find my resultant velocity, which means I'm going to have to add these vectors together. So what is, we're going to do a couple of examples. What is A plus B? 
what is uh, b plus a, what is a minus b, and what is a plus 2b. So, let's draw vectors first. a, 3 to, this, to the east, and b is 4 meters a second north. Now, luckily, this makes a nice right triangle, so my resultant is found by doing Pythagorean. It's 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that's going to give us our resultant value here, which is 5. Now, vectors always have magnitude and direction. So if this went east and north, if we wanted to put a compass point, we would say 5 meters a second northeast. Now, if we wanted to figure out angle-wise, we would need to do a little bit of trig. And to do that, we would need to take inverse tangent of 4 over 3. And that's going to give us uh, our angle. So we have two ways to report our answer, 5 meters a second northeast, or we can say 5 meters a second at, and I believe that's 58 degrees, north of east, right? If this is like our origin, our compass point origin, this is going east, well my resulting vector is actually traveling north of east by 58 degrees. That's the most accurate and most correct way to report that answer. So let's look at b plus a super fast. b plus a same thing, except now you're going to go up first, 4, and then over 3. What you guys can hopefully see is that you're going to end up with the same resultant. It's going in the same direction. It's going to be the same magnitude. Um, everything about it is going to be the same. So because of that, vector addition is commutative. So this is 5 meters per second again. All right, let's look at this one, a minus b. So vector a minus vector b. Subtracting a vector is like adding the negative of that vector, so these two things are the same, right? So when you add the negative of a vector, remember that in physics, negativity just shows direction. So it's going to be the same exact vector, except instead of going north, it's going to go south. You'll add that together, what you guys will see is you're going to get the same resultant, you're just going to end up with a different direction. So instead of it being 58 degrees north of east, it will be 58 degrees south of east. And then the last one, what is a plus 2b? Now whenever you have a vector and you're multiplying it by a number, all you're doing is increasing the magnitude of that vector. So b is 4, 2b would be 8. And you're going to do the same operation. So 3 meters to the east, and now 8 meters to the north. Now, you would find your resultant by doing Pythagorean. and then you would use inverse tangent to find your angle. All right, go ahead and do that one on your own, guys. Remember to bring your textbook on Wednesday to class, and we will do a lot more practice adding vectors together then. Have a good night.